Hi, this is Dave Getchick, Dave the Oven Guy from Custom Design Chemicals. You can find us at cdchemicals.net. And we're here today at a company called Guam Nichols on the south side of Chicago. And what, we're, what I want to show everybody is this beautiful new Baco oven. And I want to use this to demonstrate actually what's the components of a typical burn off oven and a little bit about how a typical burn off oven works. So this is a beautiful Baco oven. Comes from Gus Pro up in Canada. Here's the oven itself. There's the insulated stack going up to the ceiling. Here's our control panel over here. Um, and back here we have two sets of burners. A burn-off oven is actually made up of, uh, a modern burn-off oven is actually made up of two oven chambers. This is our lower chamber. This is the burner for our lower chamber, which is we consider a process chamber where we put the parts and we want to process. This burner up here is for a secondary chamber or our oxidizing chamber or what most of us in the industry call it an afterburner. So there's two burners that go into the oven itself into the two separate chambers. And this is the temperature sensor for the lower chamber. And on the back of the oven here, there's a temperature sensor for the stack. That tells us what the stack is at. So let me show you what the inside of the oven looks like. This is so exciting. <laughs> so this is the, we're at a place called Quam Nichols. They make speakers and they use this to burn off their paint fixtures so they could remove the powder coating from their paint fixtures so they could reuse them without and get a good ground when they used to do their electro electrostatic coating. This is the inside of the Baco oven. It's a couple weeks old and um, there is a lower chamber here. You put your parts in this chamber here and this is where the paint hooks are processed. That hole in the back is the hole for the afterburner, the oxidizer chamber. The ports to blow the um, heat into the chamber, the process chamber down here are in the back there underneath the cart. There's three different ports back there and that blows the heat down underneath the cart and up through the cart and up through the parts. And what happens is these parts burn off really, really slowly. So you get soot and you get unburned hydrocarbons that are released into this oven. And because it's starved for oxygen, because it's totally sealed here, it burns really, really slowly. And it goes into the oxidizer chamber back there through that hole. Now, once it gets in that hole, it comes, it, it, once it gets in that hole, it has more oxygen and it has a higher temperature. And there's a port back here in the oxidizer chamber. This little air port here, the oxidizer chamber cuts off right about here. And more oxygen comes into this chamber. And you could open this or close this depending on how much oxygen you need in the oxidizer chamber. And the pollutants, unburned hydrocarbons, soot, and everything else goes through this higher temperature afterburner and up through the stack. There's actually some burning that actually goes out in the stack to finish up the cleaning up the pollutants into water vapor and carbon dioxide. So that's, those are the basics of how an afterburner works. And whether it's a Baco Gus Pro, a pollution control, a steel mint, an eco oven, a uh, Jackson oven, they all have a similar components to them, similar parts to them. A pollution control oven will have internal um, afterburners and, and process burners that go in there. As a matter of fact, if we walk across the aisle here, we could see an older pollution control oven that this oven is replacing. And the pollution control oven has similar components. Here is the pollution control oven. Here is your process chamber where you put the parts into. 
That's the lower burner down there. That's the burner for the process chamber itself. And above that, there's another chain, there's another burner with the hole in it that the, the fumes go into and then go up into the stack and get burned completely. So this is a pollution control oven. Um, with the Baco oven over there, what you actually do is you take those two burners and you put them behind the a cement wall. So they have a little bit better life to them. But let's let me show you what happens when we start this thing up. So let's power up the oven. Oops. We power up the oven. The first thing we're supposed to do when we start this up is press our test button to make sure our water spray goes on. And there's our water spray going on, misting into the oven to starve the oven of oxygen by filling it up with water vapor and putting out any kind of fire that would be in there. And I'm going to start up the oven partially to show you what the afterburner looks like. So we press the run reset button and one, two, three. We have the flame coming into our afterburner chain. watching and we have other videos to help you learn more about burnout buttons. Thanks for watching.